have the privilege and the pleasure of hanging out here with Gil Gerard, Mr. Buck Rogers himself here at DragonCon 2010. Jill, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, Chris. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. You have been nothing but a pleasure to sit here and make jokes with today. <laughs> I, normally, when you know, celebrity, it's all you know, very droll. You know, what film are you working on? How's this? How's that? But not you. Right off the bat with the jokes and uh, taking care of Amy here, who's behind the camera. And uh, yeah, you worked that in really well. I, I know. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> tell that I was asked to say that. But uh, thank you. That's okay. Yeah, I can't have the boobs on the camera because, you know, it would take up all the camera. It would take up all the camera to you have the, the wide screen on. for that. Yeah, exactly. And I don't have it with me. I don't think the have... field will be a problem also. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we have the uh, 1080p capability to show them in the glory that they need to be shown or oh, leather okay. to have them leather clad. <laughs> I've been pushing for that for a while now. She won't do it? I had. Yet to see her. Uh, the she had her. You, you know? should have seen the leather boots she had on today. Is that right? Uh, I don't know why she took them off. They were, you know, almost the, you know, knee high leather wearing boots. Wearing high heel that. boots, leather boots, for that matter, you know, yeah. My feet were hurting. She's I was right tired. Right there, folks, in case you're wondering. <laughs> Just beyond Just where you the horizon see. over there. And she's exposing herself to both Chris and Okay, me. so, you know, she's I have a little cleavage, down. okay? Yeah, she is trying to break us down. I mean, she's we are completely derailing. <laughs> too, I think, not just cleavage, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. See, she's completely derailing. Yeah, I could get yeah. anybody to do anything with just showing my cleavage. <laughs> and that's why she's the executive producer of the Sad Sci-Fi Show right here on 1470 WWNN. 1470 WWNN? Yeah, WWNN. <laughs> A 50,000 watt powerhouse that gladly puts us on the air even though we don't pay the bills. That's incredible. I know. I so can't you're believe a pirate it. station, basically? You sort of. No, no. No, no. We we're just... an actual... I'm kidding. I, know. I, know. I understand. No, no, no. Really? We're... No, no. We're, no, we're, no, we're, no, we're no, a real radio just, show. I am not breaking <laughs> they FCC just, uh... law right now. <laughs> okay, fine. At least fine. I They just give it to story. us for free. Because we're your just story, wonderful. Go right ahead with it. That's fine. So what are you doing lately? Ah, uh, well, like I'm here. We're here at Dragon Con, you know, getting to meet everybody. Uh, like I said, it's been a complete pl privilege and pl pl pleasure. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. The, yeah, that's the beauty of audio is most of my uh, screw ups will be edited out, and you'll have no idea. But not on the video. That's true. See, <laughs> the video tells I got, all. <laughs> I can edit. I got the evidence right there. <laughs> I mastered audio engineering in a week. Video will only take me another week. That's, you got it. <laughs> But so other than Buck Rogers, clearly everybody knows you for that. Yeah. Uh, you've been all over TV. You know, what would you say? I mean, would you say that Buck Rogers was the definitive role for you, or has that role not come up yet? Um, I think right now, as of today, the Buck Rogers is the definitive role. But uh, the thing that's really uh, gratifying to me is that a lot of people remember a, a lot of the other stuff that I've done and enjoyed it as well, which is, which is nice to hear. It's very good when an actor, especially uh, you figure like Wesley Snipes or other actors that really get typecast as their characters, like Blade. When everybody sees Blade, they instantly think Wesley Snipes. Mm -hmm. Or Mark Hamill, who never got work because he was always viewed as uh, you know, Luke Skywalker. Right. And I mean, it really doesn't do an actor justice because it doesn't give them the chance to really break out of the role. But with you, you didn't have that. Even though you did have that, you know, ultimate role as Buck Roger. I mean, from '79 until what was '84? '81. '81. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Trying to give you a little more time than you actually have, but still, okay. a great series. It was on the air, and I mean, you really nailed the character. And I mean, look at TV. As I like to compare TV to today, and all the special effects, and what you didn't have back then, and you still pulled it off. You still told a great story, and we were still wowed and amazed with what you had. I mean, what would you say that on this series, you know, doing it, what was the, like, the greatest thing that you got to do? Play Buck Rogers. Just plain and simply, you got to play Buck Rogers yeah. and be the man. Yeah, it was fun. I, I, it's opened up so many doors to so many other experiences. Uh, it opened up to a relationship with Buster Crabb, who was the original Buck Rogers. Um, I've flown four military jets because of Buck Rogers, because the military were big fans of Buck, particularly the pilots, because they, they said, the thing that they liked about Buck Rogers was that the character was very realistic in the combat scenes because he said, all these guys said, you know, when you're in combat with another plane that if someone's trying to kill you, if you get into how serious it is, they said you would have a nervous breakdown. And they said what they do is they basically kind of wisecrack through dogfights and stuff with other planes that are trying to shoot them down. And they said that that was very true 
to them it was very true to life when Buck would do the same thing. Yeah, a lot of the my uncle was in special forces. He was an 82nd Airborne, and that is very true. A lot of these guys, that's how they do cope with you know sure. the horrors that they have to deal with. And I mean, I think you know, like you said, they got to connect to it. So that's one great thing that Buck Rogers really got to connect out to. Is there anything that you ever wanted to really just go out there and? Put your name and put your stamp on it. Something that you know. Hey, this is you know Gil Gerard, and this is my you know ultimate thing that I'm doing right now. You know, other than the Buck Rogers, clearly is the definitive character. What's the role or what's the thing that you've always wanted to do, never gotten the chance to do? I haven't found it yet. Let's see. That's good. Yeah. I'd like to. There are. I mean, there are roles that I've seen, but I'd like to find that definitive role that uh, uh, not necessarily that makes me another type of icon, but just something that that uh, uh, expands my horizons as an actor, or expands other people's horizons regarding me as an actor. Uh, I just haven't seen those kinds of roles, which would be nice, but it just doesn't happen yet. It hasn't happened yet. I mean, have you been approached by anybody, or is there anything special that you're looking into that will keep working on in the future here? Well, i got a movie I'm doing at the end of the month in uh, Utah. It's called Blood, Re Blood Fair. F A R E, which means it's and it's a it's a kind of hi fi uh, hi fi a kind of uh, uh, horror uh, kind of movie in historical context uh, of a, it's basically a guy caught in the Civil War he gets he and his entire crew get massacred and uh, he doesn't have the coin for Charon to take him across the river Styx and so he's basically stuck in that place until he delivers so many souls to share and this is the idea of the movie and then I basically I play a college professor who is uh, uh, who has a doctoral candidate under him named uh, Tyler I believe is her name and uh, she is going to this battlefield thing but my whole thing is just sort of background with her about uh, in the context of what she's studying what her theory is about that particular period of time kind of being her mentor in the movie in a way yeah yeah, so we're good. When is this uh, project going to be coming out? I don't know. I'm just a working actor. I go there, I do my thing, and I <laughs> go just home show up and, and they, they do whatever they do. Show up, you do your job. That's it. I go <laughs> That's right. Me and say the words. You know? There you go, brother. I mean, that is pretty much the best way to act. I mean, you know, on your own time and just do it as your own self and yeah. in your own way. Uh, like I said, you've already done one definitive role as Buck Rogers, and uh, you know, like we previously spoke in saying that. You know, you don't want to get wrapped into that, but how was it getting wrapped into that role? At least it was the role that, you know, uh, wouldn't come back to, say, you know, bite you in the butt and per se, and, you know, hey, oh, that guy was Buck Rogers with Point and Laugh. Yeah. So that's always... Was it, there was there a question in there? No, yeah, that's just what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for the question. Like, more of me just kind of commenting on I that. I see. Well, you know, the thing is I never got wrapped into Buck Rogers. I mean, I'm known as Buck Rogers, uh, which has always been very good for me. Uh, but it, what it did also was, was opening up other doors. It opened up uh, people knowing who I was and allowed me to pick and choose projects after Buck Rogers, uh, whether they be movies of the week or other series or whatever. It's, it, uh, it made me an established name, uh, which gave me a certain amount of, of power to choose what I wanted to do. Yeah, power is always nice, especially in Hollywood where a lot of actors you know, don't get that choice anymore. Yeah. Or they didn't get that choice back in the day. You know, agents and Hollywood being what it was, where you didn't have control over your destiny. You were basically either typecast or, hey, show up here, do this, and get paid for it. And you had no say in it. Now, going through that area and going through now, like you said, you got to basically choose your roles. Did you also get to choose, like, you know, how much you made, what you got to say, you know, hey, I'm not doing this, or I'm not going to touch that, or, hey, I want to add this. Did you get a little, you know, be, get to have a creative spark? in your uh, projects? Uh, so, yeah, I did, actually. I took uh, some creative license with Buck Rogers. I did an awful lot of rewriting on this, of the scripts and stuff. Uh, I didn't have the power to do it, but I did it. What are they going to do, fire me? <laughs> uh, I think it would be pretty hard to you know, fire be difficult, yeah. you know, the main star, though Hollywood has in the not, past. Yeah, but not with Buck Rogers. They've done it with, with basically ensemble casts where people have tried to flex their muscle and it is gone. But uh, it's hard to do that when it's the title character. Yeah, well, and you've you established that character, so it's very difficult. So I just said, okay, fine, let's make these better. 
Uh, a little humble, you know, humility doesn't, you know, hurt there. And I mean, like humility, said, that's humility. a new word. He made that up. Hum yeah. Humbleness. He probably got Scott side of your cleavage there for a second. I'm sure he did. Yeah, like, humbleness. <laughs> what? Like the breasts? Yeah, what color are eyes? <laughs> oh, we actually did that on the show. Did you that to you earlier? Tell me what color your eyes are. I'm looking right at them. <laughs> They're blue. Okay. Black, I don't know. <laughs> see? Well, like this, you know, it's hard to see. It's because I'm laughing. Oh, I see. Sure. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Now I got it. There you go. Yeah, smile wide for the camera. Yeah. <laughs> that you're not on. <laughs> exactly. Because I'm the host. That's right. You're the host. He's I'm the, the executive host. producer. Yeah. And I'll make my little marks. <laughs> remarks. She's the power behind the throne. That's right. She really is. I mean, without her today, we would not be sitting here with you. And it has been a true privilege and pleasure. Oh, we got I it right this it. time. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I did get it. <laughs> you guys <laughs> all day as you came by and said, okay, you're ready to go yet? <laughs> um, no, no, oh, I was like, are we, I said, are we there yet? <laughs> Security, where are you? Oh, okay, I think that's oh well, you'll forget you'll Ben Browder. <laughs> ben Browder, yeah. yeah. Gil Gerard, you're going to have to call me the cops on him. <laughs> For him. <laughs> Well, Gil, it has been a pre uh, a uh, Forget, don't even again, bother. A and a pleasure <laughs> to speak Come to you, your you on that side. That's right. <laughs> I can't keep my eyes off it. There's 